Hi there, I'm Alex from the Southern Ukulele Store, and this week we're going to take a look at 10 ukuleles that really only share one thing in common. I think they're pretty cool. That's a good enough reason for a video, isn't it? Eventually you do burn through all of the kind of tied in themes that make sense and you have to just say, this is cool, look at this. So we're gonna look at 10 ukuleles today, 10 tenor ukuleles that just do something special, do something different to the norm. Maybe they're just instruments that have inspired other instruments, who knows? But stick around and you'll find out with me. First up today, we're gonna to take a look at this familiar beauty. This is the Owlcraft Custom number 124. This ukulele is Port Orford Cedar with quilted maple, stained black and moody. It's an adolescent dream, this ukulele. It's loud, it's open, it's clean, it's harp-like, piano-like. We've used all kinds of terms to describe this ukulele. I just think it's cool. It's got that evil, understated vibe to it, despite having this really quite grand wraparound rosette that goes from the sound hole all the way to the back. There's a few things that Jungte and Seyun at Alcraft do that other people don't necessarily do, things that make them special and set them apart. One of them you can't see is they line the insides of the ukulele with solid spruce, which apparently helps aid projection. It's something about Alcraft you notice is that they do just jump off the page. I imagine if you played in a band of several other ukulele players, the Alcraft would be the ukulele where they'd be telling you to tone it down because it's got all of the clarity and crispness that you need, but it's just a great alternative to, say, a Kanalea or a Kaoloha, one of the Hawaiian-made ukuleles. Um, and it's a true custom shop-made instrument uh, built in South Korea by somebody who's really widely regarded in their field. So let's give the Owlcraft Custom 124 a play and see what you think. Next up today, we're gonna to take a look at the ukulele that's a first for Sus. This is a Tim Williams archtop. Tim Williams is a Plymouth-based luthier who's built guitars for many, many years and has dabbled more recently in ukuleles with a few custom commissions and a line that you may remember from late last year where they were more traditional mahogany looking instruments. Well, now we're looking at the arch tops, which is what Tim's most well known for and actually the instrument that drew us to him in the first place. Uh, around this time last year, Tim visited the shop and he had an arch top that he built for himself and Rob and I played it and we both just wanted it. We wanted it here and he agreed to make us a couple. This is the first of those and it has a European spruce top with, with an arch carved into it and then you have American walnut on the back and sides once again with an arch like a domed back. The amount of time it takes to build an arch top instrument compared to a normal ukulele, it's, it's no surprise really that it took him the best part of nine months to get that instrument made for us. Um, other features, it has a floating bridge which is made out of English sycamore, and then you have ebony um, tailpiece, an ebony tailpiece, ebony fingerboard, and just up at the headstock you've got the dolphin inlay as Tim sees fit. You've got on the back, one of my favorite features, you've got a racing stripe, makes the ukulele go faster, but also looks very, very cool at the same time. With goto tuners. And I suppose the other things to note are, first of all, a 36 mil nut width, but a really nice round Pono-esque neck. So if you've ever played a Pono, it's that kind of rounder C-shaped profile that you get with modern instruments. And the reason I like that is because, for me at least, when I put my thumb on the back of the neck, it gives me more scope to actually touch the frets and do wider spacings so it doesn't really matter about the nut whip so much because the neck profile itself is just is deep and accommodating for, for your hands more binding on the front and on the back of english sycamore as well to match that bridge and did i mention it comes with the coolest homemade case known to man it has the same aesthetic as my classrooms at secondary school in the 1990s and uh I don't know why, but that alone just feels very rock and roll to me. Is that weird? Probably a bit weird. Anyway, let's play this Tim Williams arch top for you now and see what you think.
Okay, next up today we've got the Flight Carabo Tenor. And if you're thinking, oh, what's this Carabo I keep hearing about everywhere? Well, I can tell you now, this is an exclusive model made for us by Flight. Uh, we've been working with Flight for about two and a half years now, and there's this real synergy between us in terms of trying to find out what the ukulele community are looking for and making it happen. And the quality of their instruments just seems to get better and better with each delivery. As Flight listened to the feedback, and it's really, I mean truly refreshing for us as a shop dedicated to servicing the ute community that we can deal with a manufacturer that wants to do the same thing. So the Carabo has a spruce top, mango back and sides. They all look very different. I've chosen a slightly plainer one for the video here because I, I some of them are super quirky. Most of them are quite straight grained which is what we were looking for. Something that straight grain tends to directly relate to projection you tend to get more of a direct sound from a straighter grain you have a rosewood fingerboard and bridge with these offset markers because when you're looking down it's really nice to be able to see these chunky fret dots a satin neck with the flight slotted headstock and the black tuners that you'll know from other models if you're a flight fan and then you have an exclusive flight um, southern ukulele store logo on the back of the headstock which is laser etched in. Hopefully you can see that there. A 38 mil nut width, and it's quite light on decoration, but it does have a pin bridge with these red bridge pins in an abalone rosette and front black binding. Yeah, the Carabo is, I believe, the cheapest ukulele we're gonna look at today, but I really feel like it holds its own with most ukuleles up to about seven, 800 pounds, despite being a fraction of that. And if you don't believe me, check out independent reviews from Gotta Ukulele and people online who are raving about how much they love their own flight carabos. Uh, I'm going to give this one a play for you now and see what you think. Next up today is a traditional style custom ukulele from Tiki Tiki. This is the Tiki Tiki Custom Tea. Try and say that after a few drinks. This ukulele is solid mango, really high grade mango, tightly grained, slightly quirky looking, slightly quilted, slightly flamed. It's got everything going on as we look around the body. Uh, it's based on a traditional Martin ukulele, so the proportions feel slightly more slender and compact than a modern Hawaiian tenor. And the sound is much more like a Kawaii or an old Martin. In fact, when these first came in, that's what excited us most, is it felt like somebody had gone back in time and given the early Martin factory workers some mango to play with, and this was the ukulele they produced. And we've talked about it a lot. There's plenty of other videos. I'll put links to those in the description. But for now, this is the last of the custom tees. Let's give it a play and see what you think. Okay, next up today we have the hopefully familiar Snail S60T. This is the ukulele of the year 2019. And the only problem with calling something ukulele of the year once is that you can't do it again the next year or the year after. And even though it's been a few years since we named this ukulele uke of the year, it's 
popularity has been enduring people know this ukulele people love this instrument and you don't see too many of them come up second hand because people tend to buy them and keep them it's all solid flamed acacia for the top back and sides of an ebony fingerboard and bridge you have the abalone rosette the thick abalone rosette on the front which well it's very stylistic isn't it to look at with red and yellow plastic binding around that to accentuate those points you have paduk binding on the front and back once again with a tiny bit of yellow to set off against the acacia an armrest ebony fingerboard and bridge with a slotted headstock and with some of my favorite open gear tuners the heart shaped snail tuners with amber buttons it's 35 mil nut width so if you're somebody who likes a smaller neck or likes a smaller instrument but wants to play a tenor this is a good choice likewise plenty of people out there actually prefer a 35 mil nut width um, half of my instruments at home have 35 mil nut widths and phil who's got much bigger hands than me also prefers the narrower nut width um yeah s60t uke of the year 2019 still in my heart hopefully still in yours let's give it a play and see what you think So far today I've talked about custom shop builders or luthier built instruments that compared favorably to Kanaleas and Koaloas but what about looking at one of those? So that's what we're going to do. This is a Kanalea K2T Deluxe. I like the K2T. I've always had a bit of a soft spot for it because Kanaleas themselves almost always have a very very attractive piece of koa on the top but when you pair it up with just subtle things like the black binding here and the sound hole rosette it lets the wood shine through but also gives you just a hint of something more than a kind of standard style one instrument so it's a deluxe grade hawaiian koa on the top back and sides gloss finish uh Canalea's uv gloss finish with a satin mahogany neck open back tuners that will zoom in and focus a 38 mil nut width and a Canalea pin bridge this ukulele is the kind of ukulele that people aspire to get down the line it's that i don't know it's got that hawaiian dream element to it so let's give the k2t deluxe a play and see what you think Next up today we have the El Luthier Le Rose tenor ukulele. This is a solid spruce top ukulele with solid rosewood back and sides. The eagle eyed among you will have noticed a small side sound port and the actual sound holes on the front are offset to the side kind of pointing upwards to the player when you play. Ignore my sound sample when you hear it in terms of how it looks because obviously I'm playing it the wrong way around. A rosewood fingerboard and bridge. I like the bridge on these Eleutheas, it's stylized in its own way too, with maple front and back binding, a cutaway for upper fret access, you also have a bound maple neck and they use really nice figured neck, uh, maple on the neck, so when you're looking down you're seeing a quality, really quirky looking piece of wood. The Eleuthia headstock with antique style buttons, so a brass effect I would say, it's like a kind of aged brushed brass chrome weird effect looks good that's what matters and a 37 mil nut whip so slightly wider nut whip than the snail we've just looked at more akin to a modern hawaiian ukulele 
Uh, also, the Olithia's come in a really nice gig bag, and they have the quality, in my opinion, of an Anui Nui UT200, which we're going to look at later on in the video. But they have their own vibe at the same time. So let's give the Olufia La Rose a play and see what you think. Last up today, we're going to take a look at Ukulele of the Year 2021. This is the Flight A10 QM. This is quilted maple with a really lovely blue aqua stain. It's almost a sunburst in that you have the black outer rim with the quilted top, but all of them on the back have well, basically a swimming pool-esque. If I was to look here and put this right up to the camera, you could almost be fooled into thinking that I was at the end of a swimming pool, like some giant monster. Yeah, kind of works, doesn't it? You have front ebony binding. You have a beveled armrest for comfort. It's actually a slightly bigger tenor body than most ukuleles, more like a super tenor in size. And one of my favorite features about these A10s are the maple neck. So it's a satin maple neck, which feels completely different to every other ukulele in the shop. It's more, it's kind of more baseball bat in feel. <laughs> you know, it feels like a softer wood when you're holding it. Up to slotted headstock, with the offset design, the special flight custom logo and gold tuners with white buttons. The A10QM comes with a 38mm nut whip, so it's a slightly wider nut whip for a slightly chunkier ukulele on the whole. And they do different combinations of these. We're looking at the A10QM today. The QM comes in a faded version and a non-faded version and you have the aqua and then you have the um, the mango version and the cocobolo version. There's lots of different A10 variations out there, but this is uh, definitely the most popular in the shop at this time. Let's give the A10 QM a play and see what you think. Ignore Romeo. Let's do a sound sample. Okay, the final ukulele we're going to look at today is the Anui Nui UT200 Moonbird. This was the ukulele that kickstarted an entire genre of ukuleles made in the Far East that were truly high end. The Moonbird's been around for about eight years now, and in that time, it's been always the popular alternative to a Hawaiian K brand ukulele. In all of our listings, going back to the first time we saw these and held them with our own hands and heard them with our own ears, we were thinking, wow, this is really going to make other people up their game. And I think that's why this video can exist today, because without the Moonbird, I don't think there would be the A10 series from Flight. Without the Moonbird, there probably wouldn't be the El Luthia La Rose that we looked at earlier on. Without the Moonbird, it's possible that Snail wouldn't have ever bought out the S60. I couldn't confirm that, but there seems to have been a real reach from the manufacturers in China, Indonesia to, to push forward and offer something that was more desirable and not just affordable. To build instruments and then set the price as opposed to build instruments to a price. And the Moonbird holds its own really well against any instrument really. If you're after a projecting loud ukulele with clarity that has a, an aesthetic uniqueness to it, then look no further. Um, it's Swiss moon spruce, hence the name the moon bird, and then you have this Indian rosewood back and sides, which always comes up looking awful on camera, but in real life it's, I mean it's just chocolatey, you know, it's got that velvety look to it. You have the maple moon rosette around the sound hole with Anui Nui's unique bridge, uh, slight eclipse inlays going up to the paddle headstock with the Goto planetary tuners. 
The nut width has changed a few times over the years. So it's worth checking the, each individual listing with the stores when you're looking at buying one of these. This is a second hand one. And the reason I'm showing this one off today is because it has a wound low G and I think that it's nice to give you a sound sample of an Anui Nui Moonbird with a low G because that's what most people do with it. And all of our existing sound clips over the last five plus years have all been high G. Let's give the UT200 Moonbird a play and see what you think. We've looked at 10 tenor ukuleles, but which one was your favourite? Which one did you like the least? Let us know in the comments section. If you have any questions, you can contact me in store on 01202 430 820 or you can email me at alex at ukulele.co.uk. Hopefully up on the screen right now, you're seeing videos from other top 10s we've done over the years. But I'm Alex. Thanks for watching. I'll see you very soon.